Stretching north and south of the equator in West Africa are vast areas of dense forests and swamplands as yet unexplored by white men. A virgin territory penetrated only by the great Congo River and its tributaries. Here in this wild, steaming portion of the dark continent is the home of the Ponga, native name for the gorilla. It was here on the fringe of gorilla territory in a nameless native village inhabited by a tribe of fierce Negritos an incident occurred which was destined to startle the civilized world. you shall have a chance to escape. And in return for my aid, you shall bring back to civilization the precious diary of Dr. Deirdre. Gave him my word of honor. I must succeed. For if you don't, the most astounding anthropological discovery of the ages will be lost to the world, and I will have lived in vain. How do you somehow don't worry? So why don't you escape with me? The glory of such a discovery should go to you. Ten years ago, I might have attempted it, but now it's too late. You are still young enough to have a fighting chance. Now, follow my instructions, my friend, and good luck to you.
any hope for him, Doc? I'm afraid not. He's just too weak to fight jungle fever. I don't know how he managed to travel as far as he did. Do you think you can keep him alive to Sir Harry or I, I expect him any day? I don't know, Van. I'm doing everything I can. I know you are, but... But if Sir Harry could only hear the astonishing things he said, it would mean so much. The man is delirious. You don't actually believe he saw a white girl, do you? Oh, yes, I do. It's the fever. No, Doc. There must be some truth behind the stories those hunters brought back from the interior. About a white girl attacking your natives? Yes, sir. Poppycock. Some drunken trader probably saw it coming out of a bottle of bourbon. That's what I thought. Until Kunduzen showed up. Wait till Sir Harry arrives and I let you in on an amazing discovery. Come in. Boss! Both come. That must be Sir Harry. Keep a close watch on our patient. Righto, but you better hurry. We haven't much time. Miss Thank you, Peter. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. Greetings to you, Sir Harry. Oh, it's famous. The same to you, Ben Holcher. <laughs> my sexy, Mr. Carville. Carville, this is Peter Van Dorn, one of my oldest and dearest friends. How do you do? How do, you do? Oh, the belly blast is better. Blew up the blinking smell. Then the belly blast and rain came down and drove the blight around. <laughs> Facts. Leave it all, boys. Let us hear. I haven't time to explain, but there's a man dying at my home who holds the key to the most amazing anthropological discovery of the century. Would you mind coming along right away? Let's go. Let's attend to the unloading. Immediately, sir. Come, Pam. Carvel. I tell you, I saw it. A white gorilla. With a baby girl in its arms. I saw it. I saw it. What does he mean, the white gorilla? It means that the missing link between man and monkey is not a myth. This unfortunate man saw it. Come with me and I'll show you what he brought back from the jungle. And the old white man who saved Gunderson from death at the hands of the Negritos was the doctor who had accompanied Dr. Friedrich Diodorf's ill-fated expedition. Dr. Diodorf? What an amazing story. But, but the white gorilla, what basis do you have for calling him the missing link? I was coming. This box contains Dr. Friedrich Diodorf's personal diary given to Gunderson by his rescuer. Here, my friends, is the unmistakable proof of the existence of the missing link. A strange piece of semen characteristics, but with the faculty of almost human celebration. You mean a gorilla with human intelligence? A low grade of intelligence. Dr. Friedrich Theodor proved it by applying the standard mentality test. 
My word, the old chap must have been a bit cracked to be asking a monkey to size IBCs. Hmm. Cracked or not, dear Doc's experiments might very well prove the Darwinian theory. I would certainly enjoy the acclaim which will go to the man who takes the missing link back to civilization. Oh, Father. I've been hoping you'd say that, Sir Harry. By Jove, it's worth having a go at it. Good. We'll be passing through gorilla territory anyhow. Well, if you ask me, the whole thing's a hoax, just monkey business. Well, nobody's going to ask you, Carswell. Gunderson is dead. It now becomes our obligation to follow through where he left off. Meaning you're beginning to regret that you ever left London, eh, what? Oh, it isn't that. It's just that I can't help thinking of all the needless dangers you'll have to encounter. Oh, I love excitement, Clive. You seem to have forgotten that I was born on a safari. However, if you'd rather return to London, I'm sure Father right, will yeah. understand. Yes, Sam, you know, being with you makes yes, up for all yes. that discomfort. All right, come on, get that over there. Come on, let's get moving here. Good morning, Hans. Good morning, Herr Bondo. Hans, I want you to meet the leader of our expedition, Sir Harry Braxton. I'm honored, mein Commandant. Well, thank you. I'm pleased that Van Dorn was able to engage a man with your qualifications to guide us. My daughter, Miss Pamela. How do you do? The pleasure is mine, Fräulein. My secretary, Carlo. How do you do, sir? And Baxter. Hello. Now, Hans, if you'll point out our canoes, we're sure our luggage aboard. What's in the bed of here? What's in the door? Coming, wait. Here's the boss man. Number one boss man. Savvy? Savvy. Me, number one porter boy. You show boss man to canoe. You don't have to. Follow number one porter boy. You will follow me. I will show you to your canoe.
About this point, if we pack in through the jungle, we come to a trail over the mountain that will save us over 150 miles of water transport. By Jove, that'll save a lot of time, too. Nice going, Hans. You've been over that trail before, Hans? Twice, sir. Now, about here, we come to a point... You shave every day when none of the other guards do. It's habit, miss. A hangover from my years in His Majesty's service. You see service in the World War? My father did. No, ma'am. I, uh, you were London in? No, ma'am. Are you, uh, a remittance man? No, ma'am. You're presuming too much, Bishop. Your employment as rifleman doesn't entitle you to any social privileges. I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again. of presumption, your position as secretary to my father doesn't give you the right to choose to whom I may talk. Well, he's so obviously beneath you, Pam. Mr. Bishop did not presume anything. I talked to him. And I'll do so again whenever and wherever I please. And if I were you, I wouldn't presume too much upon his good nature. It might prove uh, rather awkward. How far from the mountains is that Negrito village? About 200 miles northeast as the crow flies. About there. We're about ready to shove off, my dear. Are all your things stowed aboard? Well, yes, Father, but... Uh... But what? Well, I was wondering if I could have Bishop for my personal guard instead of Stringer. Very well. You shall have Bishop. Take care of it, Hans. Yes. I hope Stringer hasn't been discourteous to you. Oh, not at all, Major. Well, I've been observing the way Bishop does things, and... Well, I feel he's more capable. I quite agree with you, my dear. You've been promoted, Bishop. From rear guard to personal guard for Fräulein Braggart. On whose orders? By the Fräulein. You're a fast worker, my friend. You're crazy. I haven't spoken two words to the girl. Besides, I like my present beauty. Don't be too close. If you play your cards right, you've got a chance to marry a fortune. I'm satisfied. Anything you say, but you're her guard, so get aboard a canoe.
don't like your present duty, do you? When my services are hired, I expect to do what I'm told. But you don't like being my personal guide, is that it? I don't like being made the goat while you punish an ardent admirer. Mr. Carswell doesn't interest me. That's what you mean. I don't think you're capable of being interested in anything but yourself. You're very rude. And very uncouth. Also a congenital liar. Besides, I'm a positive bounder where women are concerned. Most women. This is the village we've been seeking. I told the chief who were just passing through to hunt the white gorilla. He said the white gorilla had killed one of his warriors. Ask him about the old white man who gave the diary to Gunther. I'm afraid that wouldn't be wise, mine here. It might make them more suspicious of us than they are. So what do you propose? I'll ask the chief if he'll allow us to camp here for a few days to rest and do some trading. And if the old white man is still here, he'll seek us. Quite right, Han. We bow to your better judgment. Guadalajara, fora com o Zala Tuage na Potumba. Moça, que me cabeça me lavia, uma coisa matar, o que? The chief says we can stay here long enough to do some trading, but we can't camp in the village. Não sei se vai o tempo nem. I can't say I blame the old boy. He's probably had good reason for it. Have the porters break out some of the cotton goods and trinkets. Yes, sir. Mambo Jumbo, carrying me. Fora com o Zala Tuage na Potumba. Caucasian. Definitely. Do you think he's the man we are looking for? There's only one way to find out. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Uh, whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? Oh, I'm Sir Harry Bragdon, Royal Society of Explorers. 
And this is Peter Van Dorn, my good friend and noted anthropologist. Why, this is indeed a pleasure, for I'm quite familiar with your contributions to science. Uh, perhaps you are familiar with the works of my former colleague, Dr. Friedrich Deodor. Why, Dr. Deodor was responsible for our coming here. Or perhaps I should say his diary. Why then, then Gunderson got back alive. Yes. But he died of jungle fever a few days after he reached Mojave. You said the diary has brought you here. Is it your intention to search for the missing link? Yes, and we need your help. Come with me. <laughs> Sorry, I have no chance to offer you. But you don't mind the floor. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, not at all. Quite all right. My name doesn't matter. I was the anthropologist who accompanied the ill-fated Deodorf expedition. Uh, anyhow, Deodorf was my friend, and I stuck by him after the others had deserted, and I was a witness to his murder by the missing link. Doctor, we are very anxious to know what you have in this bag. Oh, yes. Uh, I was going to show you some photos I made. I was afraid to entrust them to Gunderson. Now, yeah. Now, that is Dr. Frederick Theodore. In my opinion, one of the world's greatest anthropologists. They are the members of the expedition with a portion of a permanent camp in Gorilla Territory. Do you suppose there's any part of their camp still standing? Hardly. After 10 years, it was a constant fight then to keep the jungle out. These photographs are priceless, Doctor. We'll guard them with our lives. Well, there are others there showing the missing link reacting to some intelligent tests we made, which you can study at your leisure. But this one shows him full grown at five years. Just a few weeks before he broke out of his cage and murdered Deodorf. We are deeply indebted to you, Doctor. Isn't there something we can do for you in return? Perhaps on our return, you'd like to go back to civilization with us. No, I'd rather not. My life on this earth is growing short, and my mission, if you can call it such, is about finished. Now, uh, this map will guide you to Deirdre's camp, and I'd advise you to rebuild it and use it as base of all future activity. <laughs> Otherwise, you may traverse the entire length and breadth of the Congo and never catch sight of a single gorilla. I assume from your suggestion that Dr. Deodorf used some methods to lure the gorillas into his camp. Oh, yes. His method was quite simple. He discovered that the medium plant was a choice food for the gorilla. And so he planted it all around his camp. you find some photos of the medium in those. Here you are, Mother. If you don't want it for a Kamara, you can use it for bathroom care. I don't know about that lab, but I'm going to keep the Interesting, yeah? Want me to pick you off a handbag? Oh, no, thanks. If I were you, I wouldn't do any shooting around this village. This is absolutely necessary. <laughs> The 
ready to shove off whenever you give the word. Well, the sooner the better. Just as I was going to recommend, my hair, these Negritos are not very friendly. The chief and his witch doctor might be planning to ambush us for the camp of the night. Look over there. What would you advise, Hans? Continuous travel, day and night, till we're at least 50 miles from the village. Excellent suggestion, Hans. Where's Miss Pamela? She and her cows well are down by the river. Get everything ready to leave immediately. Yes, please. Pam! Yes, Father? It's become necessary to shove off at once. <laughs> Snatch about 40 weeks. I'll gladly keep watch. I'm not tired. I'm used to long watches. Does it change your mind? Track. Go him that way. I believe these are fresh tracks. We ought to follow them. What do you think, Han? Why not clear out of space and set up a temporary camp? Then if you wish to do some exploring, you'll have a base to operate from. You are right again, Han. My enthusiasm ran away with me. I'm glad somebody still has enthusiasm. 
I'm afraid I lost mine crossing that swamp. Very well, Hans. Let's camp here. Perhaps a good rest will give my morale a lift. An animal cage. Good going, Bishop. This must be the spot. trap is all set for the blighters. Now all we've got to do is plant medium all around the place and onto the cover. Yes, and pray for the white gorilla to get hungry, eh? If it works for Dr. Deodor, it will work for us, in spite of your sketching I'm certainly joking. How do we know if the trap is sprung if we're inside the stockade? By means of a slight improvement by Baxter over the Deodor model. Now, you see that there bell up there? Now, just by way of a demonstration, if you'll all step aside, we'll show you how it goes. First, we hook this in here. Now, Miss Pamela, here's your gorilla. Comes in only just a whiff of the men's job. <laughs> so we up to the windfall to wet his appetite. <laughs> and being a greedy blighter, he eats his way right up to the trap. <laughs> well, there's a whole bunch of it out in the center. So, he steps right out there to see what he can do about it. <laughs> well, you see how it works, Miss Pamela? It looks like the Baxter invention is a blooming success. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for making a blasted monkey me. <laughs> think I've been smelling what? That's it. Gorilla bait. By comparison, a livery stable would smell like a new blown nose. I'm glad the tree hider didn't make a monkey out of me. Well, top that seven. Pop off. Time for grabbing. Go ahead and get it. I'll watch the gate while you're gone. All right, I'll relieve you when the hunting party gets back. Take your time. Take your time. They won't be back for hours yet. All right. <laughs> Beautiful knife. Oh. Thank you. What do you say, Webb? Would you like a chance to win back the 20 shillings I took from you last night? Sure, I'd like to have revenge. How about you, Bishop? Some other time. I don't feel lucky tonight. You can count me in hand. I might as well lose my money to you. I have no place to spend it. Good night, Miss Hamill.
I want to talk to you. Well? You're not playing fair with me, Pam. What do you mean? Well, ever since we've been in Africa, you've been treating me like a stranger. Well, I'm afraid it's your fault, Clive. I've rather resented you for getting that. But you know I love you. And I'm very fond of you. Well, please don't mistake my friendship for more than it was intended. Oh, I see. Let's be good friends. What do you say? Well, what can I say? Good night, Clive. Good night. Oh dear, what's the matter? I just saw a huge beast looking in at me through the window. There's nothing out there, Pamela. Oh, but it was there. I saw it. A huge beast with flaming eyes. Control yourself, my dear. You were probably having a nightmare. Oh, no, Father, I was wide awake. It was real. But no jungle beast could get over our stockade wall. No. Couldn't a, a gorilla? Oh, now I know you are dreaming. Gorillas are not climbing beasts. Sir Harry! Sir Harry! Well, there's nothing wrong. Pamela was dreaming she saw a gorilla looking in her window. And it was so realistic she woke up screaming. <laughs> Bishop, you'd better take a look around. Uh, Stringer, Webb, check the back fence. Okay.
evening, Miss Blanchard. I didn't intend to disturb you. Please sit down. After you, ma'am. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Why should anyone observe the social life that is here? This isn't civilization. It's the jungle. A man shouldn't forget to pay his respects to a charming lady even in the jungle, Miss Black. Oh. It's only a reminder that I'm not in you. Stop addressing me as Miss Bragdon. I'm Pamela and you're Jeffrey. Why? What's going on here? Answer me, Bishop. Why did you strike Carbo? I'm sorry, sir. I must have lost my temper. Go on. Why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him how I find her in your arms and you're kissing her? I resent such presumption, Bishop. You were engaged as a rifleman, not to make love to my daughter. I must have lost my head. I'm sorry, sir. You've lost my confidence and respect. If it were possible, I'd send you back to Mojave. But, Father, it was all my fault. I... I'll talk to you later. Go to your room. But, Father... Pamela, in the morning, I shall appoint a more trustworthy guard for my daughter. And if you so much as speak to her again, I'll have you put under arrest. Understand? Yes, sir. By Jove, we've trapped her. <laughs> Because it will be all right, but not your white man. I'm satisfied the trap works. That gives me hope. What are you going to do with it? Shoot it? Don't be an idiot. If we kill him, all our efforts will be wasted. We'll never have another gorilla come near the place. Baxter, put the ladder down for him. Right, sir. We'll give him a chance to get out. I want to talk to you, Hans. What's on your mind? Well, I'm fed up with this. I'm sick of wasting my time trying to find a white monkey. So? You tell me that you had a definite purpose in joining this expedition. Supposing I have? Well, I'd, I'd like to throw in with you if there's a chance. Without knowing my objective? Well, anything would be better than this. If you throw in with us, there can be no backing out, understand? And if we fail... You'll risk being hanged with the rest of us. Well? I'll do anything if I can take Pamela with me. Oh, I don't know about that. I hadn't figured on taking a woman along. Suppose she objects to going with you. Well, suppose the Harry objects to your plans. That isn't going to stop you, is it? You can take her, but she'll be your responsibility. All right. Good, I can tell you our plans now. I know where there's a fabulous gold field. And by borrowing Herr Bragdon's safari, we can bring out enough of the shiny metal to make us richer than the Bank of England. I'm with you all the way. Come with me. This is an outrage. I shall spend every penny I possess to prosecute you, criminals. Out and off will be then, Sir Harry. It's best to bargain with the blighters. Carswell, I would never have thought you'd be an accessory to this criminal venture. You must be mad. Shut up. Tie them up. Mumbo Jumbo. Maraco Dunga. Maraganga. Get over to the rear. 
My friends, we are taking all the guns and supplies with us. But if you make no attempt to follow, we will leave a cache on the riverbank a two-day trek from here. With care, it will be sufficient to get you back to Mojave. But if you attempt to follow, we will leave nothing. Come on, Pam, you're coming with us. Oh, no, I'm not. How dare you, you insolent young bounder. Don't be a fool, Carswell. Your horse going to get your blue neck scratched. You coming, Pam? No, I'm not. All right, Mumbo Jumbo. Bring the Fräulein with us. What man said, come you? Don't you dare touch me. Araka has to go now. Take a bunch of back of the ship. Mahala go now. Mahala go now. Why is this place? Bravo, Bishop. Nice going, Bishop, old boy. Now, if we only had some guns, we could take off to the blinders and turn the tables on them. If we only had some cartridges. Perhaps we'll soon have both. Sure, Kruger is going to leave them for us on the riverbank. You didn't really believe that, did you? Didn't you? My dear fellows, Kruger can't possibly afford for us to get out of here alive. Do you really mean he's cold-blooded enough to leave us stranded without food or guns? It wouldn't be the first time, Van Dorn. You seem to know quite a bit about Herr Kruger. It's part of my job. I'm afraid I'm not quite what I seem. You see, I joined your safari under orders from the Rhodesian Secret Service. About 18 months ago, the bodies of a party of prospectors were found in the bush. Each man shot through the head. We discovered they'd hired a guide. The guide's body wasn't there. I can only tell you, gentlemen, that the description of the guide fits Kroger very well. Further, it was established there were two other members of the original party, riflemen, hired by the same guide. Their bodies weren't there either. Webb and Stringer, very possibly. Yes, but what are we going to do for guns and supplies? I've taken care of that. Bishop, I owe you an apology. There isn't time for that now. Every minute that Pamela's with Kroger, she's in danger. If you'll take command, we'll follow you. Good enough. Come on. It would be very foolish to attempt it. You might become the prey of some wild beast. Mumbo Jumbo, Araka and Seguga. Nobody is here. Go back to the middle of the door.
I'm in trouble. Get the canoes in the lake. You're there. Where's your little right back to? I'm there. Make it fast. Let's go. 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 Let's all aboard, everybody. All right, boys. Did you hear me? I said all aboard. But you promised to leave food and guns on the bank for Father and the others. I've changed my mind, Fräulein. But you've got to. If you don't, they'll starve to death. It's either their lives or mine, Fräulein, and I believe in self-preservation. Clive, you can't let him do this. It's the same as murder. She's right. It would be murder. You've got to give them a fighting chance. Shut up! No one any advice from you, I'll ask for it. I'll get aboard, both of you. Pam! a lot of British spunk in you. But when I give orders, you've got to learn to obey them. Now get up, Fräulein. I have no more time to waste. Carswell was dead when we reached him. So we hurried on after Krogart. There was no sign of him or Miss Dragon. Then all of a sudden we heard the savage roar of a jungle beast. And Krogart cries for help. And Miss Dragon screaming. We finally found him. Krogart had been killed by a huge gorilla who was holding Miss Bragdon in his arms. And he was a white gorilla.
Look like some lion found Cobus' body during the night. Yes. Gorilla tracks. From now on, we'll have to be careful not to overlook any sign. We'll probably find lots of those tracks, but the deeper ones we'll have to follow. The white gorilla was carrying over 100 pounds of extra weight. Come on. Oh, my God. 
I certainly hope his disposition improves. He doesn't seem at all pleased with the fame that's coming his way. Well, the blinking missing link is all ready to go bye-bye. And we've gathered enough mention to feed him for a year. Well, I can hardly wait until we get back to London. I know a couple of anthropologists who will get the surprise of their lives when we exhibit him. Do you really think he's a missing link between man and monkey? I am convinced that he is. In the few tests we've been able to make, he has shown a much higher intelligence quotient than any other ape we've ever heard of. Well, whether he is or not, he's going to be the subject of controversy for the next 50 years, and his appearance will startle the world. <laughs> Pardon me, Bishop. Do you think the white gorilla will... <laughs> 